Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God a hand clap for praise because he is worthy of the glory and the honor. I don't know about you, but I am glad to be here on this morning. Let us stand and join together in praise and worship. Can you stand to your feet? Join together in praise and worship. You may not know every lyric, and that's okay, but if you could just put your hands together, that's quite fine. Come on. Hey. Let's see. 
sing that one more time. Say, you've been better than me. You've been better than me than I've been to myself. Hey. Come on, say, you've been better than me. You've been better than me than I've been to myself. says oh I want to love you forever that's a pretty long time but we know that God has been loving us <laughs> since the beginning of time and so if that's your desire to love God just as much as he loves you we could never love him as much as he loves us but try keep trying daily trying to give God that same love, that same reciprocation he gives to us. Why don't you just worship with us? Sing along if you know the words. Mm -hmm. Your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness towards me. Your love is so amazing. And it brings me to my knees Oh, I'm gonna love you forever Oh, I'm gonna love you forever Can you sing that with me? Say, oh, oh forever somebody raise your voice and say oh I'm gonna love you forever say your goodness your mercy and your kindness towards me your love is so amazing it brings me to my knees so I oh, 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 I'm gonna love you forever if you know it sing and say oh, oh, oh I'm gonna love you forever sing it from your heart say oh, oh the river that never runs dry my heart is your temple living inside lord you're like the air i breathe you keep me alive lord i need you close please stay around lord you're like the river that never runs dry my heart is your temple living inside lord you're like the air i breathe you keep me alive lord i need you close please stay around lord i need you close please stay around lord i need you close please stay around you won't ever give up on me and all i have will never be enough to show you how much i love you but i'm gonna try 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 yes i'm gonna try 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 you won't upon me and all that I have will never be enough to show 
show you how much I For the rest of my life, yes, I'll try, try. I'll give it my best, I won't keep on trying. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm gonna try. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm gonna try, try. I may fall, but I'll get up and keep on trying, trying, trying. As long as I don't give up, I'll keep on trying. Trying, I'm gonna try, try, try. I'll give it my best. I'll keep on trying. Yes, yes, I'm gonna try, try, try. Oh, I'm gonna love you forever. you forever can you sing that with me say oh I'm gonna love you forever Holy Spirit it says Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence we want to just be overcome by your presence God wherever you are we want to dwell there we want to dwell in your presence there is peace in your presence there is rest in your presence oh God and we don't want to miss it amen Your glory, God, is what I 
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your islanding hope. Your presence, Lord. Mm -hmm. I taste it and see of the sweetest of love. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Now, can you sing that with me? Say, Holy Spirit. this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God it's what our heart longs for to be overcome by your presence Your prayer. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. By your presence, your presence, Lord. We want to be overcome by your presence, Lord. We don't want control. We don't want no control. Take over. Take over, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit. Oh, we want to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We want to be overcome by presence Lord your presence Lord your presence Lord we want to be overcome by we want to be overcome by we want to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Because we realize we can do nothing in our own strength, in our own power, because the reality is we're feeble and weak. But as we have gathered in to this place of worship, this place of prayer, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would have your way. And then we yield to your presence we yield to your power we submit to all that the holy spirit that you want to speak to us on today father we are thankful and grateful for another day that we could gather and worship and praise thank you for keeping us because somebody didn't make it somebody didn't wake up somebody didn't have the strength somebody didn't have the means somebody wasn't in their right mind on today so father i just say thank you again for today and in today father we feel your compassion your love your mercy because if it had not been for your love and your mercy your coming we could surely be consumed but we thank you for your son jesus <laughs> who took the sting of death away father i pray that as we spend this time, the people don't see Adam, they don't hear Adam, but they hear the words that you have poured down deep in my heart. And I pray, Father, through all that is said on today, that at the end of the day, that someone would leave with more faith, with more strength, and that we'll be able to take this word, apply it to our lives, and then share it with the lost world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God for you. Another day, right? Another day that we are thankful, grateful for. Let me say this to those who are here and those who are watching. Uh, happy Father's Day, man. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers uh, who stand up, who take responsibility, who do the best that we can. Amen. And so we extend that. And so we also want to say uh, on this Juneteenth weekend, right? We've had some celebrations even going into today on this Juneteenth weekend as well. Happy Juneteenth. Um, enjoy it. Find something uh, to do to celebrate. Amen. And so as we came upon this Sunday, of course, Father's Day was on my mind. And though I'm not one who always preaches based on what the calendar just simply preaching what it is that the holy spirit deposits in me on this on on on, on this week i couldn't help but but to think of father's day think of myself as a father um then fathers that i know but but what captured my mind is right i, I couldn't help but to think about my own father and all that 
he taught me and all that he said to me and though he's no longer here I can still hear his voice right and I can still hear all of these things and so I found myself leading up to today um, feeling really in a good mood and thinking about that stay with me and so with that I, I the, the word training came to my mind and so I began to look through the Word of God and there's many scriptures that when we deal with parenting when we deal with either motherhood but particularly for today when we deal with fatherhood we know scriptures like what train up a child in the way that they should go right and when they are older they won't depart from it and so with that but then I, I, I thought of how Paul in the book of Ephesians and you can find your way there Ephesians chapter 6 on your phone on in your Bible somewhere get there your iPad Ephesians chapter 6, I was, was, was captivated by when Paul opens up in the first few verses, he, he talks about children obeying their parents, right, and honoring your father and mother. And he gets down in verse 4, and he says, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. But then we get them up, there, we get there again, and he says, bring them up in the training and admonition. And so there that word was training again, right? And so I looked over my life and, 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 and I thought about fathers and my own father and how one of the first things that fathers attempt to do is to train their children to what, right? To, to be safe, right? We can remember, grab your hand, show you, look across both ways before you cross the street, trying to teach you how to be safe. Stay with me. Uh, for most of us, it probably, especially for the males, our fathers probably were the first ones to tell us to put our dukes up and give us some type of training in form of, of, of defense, right, or fighting to protect ourselves. And so there was constantly this training that was going on. And, and, and it happens here, right, through our fathers training us to do all these things. But even in the Bible, you see this train, 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 train. So I thought about that, right? Feeling good. All the things, my father, I'm the man that I am because of the things that he imparted to me, even things that I didn't understand that I can, that I can use today at 40 years old. Then as I kept reading, I found my way to verse 10. Paul closes the letter right here in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and I realized something. I say, with all the things that my father and fathers train their children to do, right, to defend yourself, to be safe, to look both ways, to make sure you watch your surroundings, even all the things that I tell my daughters, I said this, when I thought about, I said, but in terms, that is the physical, right? That's what we do every day to live in this life. But I had to be honest with myself and say, when it came to my spiritual life, when it came to, 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 to the things that I would face in terms of living in this world and all the things that would be thrown at me, what I realized, right, is as is, is much honor as I give my father, he dropped the ball when it came to training me to protect myself against the enemy. Didn't tell me that, 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 that in this life, he told me a whole lot of things that I would face, but some of the things that I have faced uh, for most of my life, it has been in the spiritual realm, and I have walked around, like many of us, unaware of everything that was going on, and so this is the thing. When it comes to the enemy, uh, when it comes to the devil, most of us, why? we either don't take them seriously enough or we give them too much power. And so if we're honest, most of us... Uh, we don't use it too often, and we're a little shaky, we're a little scared of the devil, and everything, every time something comes up, we say the devil is on our track, right, and we begin to backtrack because we have not uh, learned to train ourselves spiritually to do what? To be able to stand up against the devil. And so I thought on today, what, what, what better thing to give, right, than to understand that uh, even as we deal with fathers, that if you do him before you do anything with all the training and the nurturing that we do, let's make sure that we train our children what to, 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 to protect themselves and to defend themselves against the evils of this world and reminding them that there is a spiritual battle that's going on. Right. Spiritual warfare. But you don't even have to stop at fathers. It's just everyday life. Something practical that each and every one of us can use as we look to the scriptures to say this. How do I protect myself? Right. Against all the threats and all the things that come against me spiritually. So just for a few minutes. Right. And I'll be very devotional on today. For a few minutes, I like to preach from the thought. Protect yourself at all times. Those of you who are boxing fans, you know that when 
uh, when they stand in the middle of the ring, they grab their hands and they tell each fighter what? Protect yourself at all times. Keep your dukes up. Make sure if you drop your hands, you're liable to get what? You're liable to get knocked out. And so spiritually, most of us, right, we get knocked out. We get slaughtered by the enemy because we don't protect ourselves at all times. And so the question then says, well, Pastor Adam, how then am I supposed to protect myself in the I, I know how to protect myself in the, in the physical but how do I protect my mind? How do I protect my heart? How do I protect my emo? How do I protect my spirit? How do I protect it spiritually? Uh, here in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10, watch this, watch what Paul says. As he closes, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not, watch this, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, here's the instruction, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints." The overall theme and what we see here is that Paul is instructing us right here on today for each and every one of us that we in terms of spiritual battle, we will need the full armor of God. Why? How? So for what reason? So that we will be able to win against the devil. Don't 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 miss that. Because though we, we, we have been taught and though we have taken it where we are afraid of the devil and we, and we run and hide, the instruction here tells us what? That we can be successful, right? That, that when it comes to the enemy, that we do not have to run, that we can stand. And in terms of spiritual battle, we do not have to be afraid. We have to be aware of the enemy, but we don't have to be what? Afraid of the enemy. And so the, the, the greatest way and the best way is Paul then gives us these, these, these biblical truths, these, these bibli this biblical application so that you and I not only may be able to stand spiritually, watch this, but we'll be able to win the spiritual war against the enemy. And so Paul opens up in, in chapter 6 and verse 10. And as he is introducing, he's, he's closing his letter. I want you to pay attention to the first instruction that he, that he says. He says, be strong in the Lord. Write that down. Because watch this, when it comes to this spiritual battle, when it comes to spiritual warfare, what Paul is reminding us, what he is letting us know, it doesn't really matter how physically strong you are. It doesn't really matter how, how much physical tactics your father or your mother or your neighborhood could have taught you. He says this, right? It's not going to work in the spiritual. The physical schemes and what you can come up, it's not going to work against the enemy and the things he tries to bring against our lives and our homes. So the first thing that he says is that if you're going to be strong spiritually, watch this, that you would have to be strong in the Lord. Because he reminds us that we don't have it within ourselves. If, if, if we are going to have the strength that we need, why? For these battles that we face in life. And for everyone that I'm talking to, for everyone who will listen to this sermon, right? You are facing some type of battle in this life. For each and every one of us, it, 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 it may be different, but as long as you can remember, there it could be a mental battle, it could be an emotional battle, it can be a physical battle, it is the spiritual battle, it is the battle with your, with what, your finances, and if it ain't one thing, it's another. There's always this battle. But when it comes to the spiritual, he says, the spiritual battles that will come in your life, that the only way, why, the only, only way that you will be adequate, the only way that you will be sufficient, watch this, he says, you're going to have to rely on the Lord's strength. He says, watch this, because what we understand is God in, in terms of the spiritual, right? He is the only one that has the power that we need to do what? To be able to win these spiritual wars against what? Against the enemy. And so the first thing that Paul opens up, he says, watch this. In if you're going to protect yourself at all times, then you're going to have to 
be able to, in terms of your physical strength, you're going to have to sacrifice that, and you're going to have to know that you must be strong in the Lord. Y'all with me this morning? And so to protect myself at all times, spiritually, right, in all these battles of life and things that come against me, I must, I must know, I have to know this, right? I have to put my pride to the side. I have to put a whole lot of things, and I have to know that God is going to have to be the source of my strength. But then he moves on in, in verse 11. And in verse 11 of, of, of the text, watch what, what he says. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil. He says this, you are not going to be able to go on the battlefield with, 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 with what you have on. It, with a spiritual battle, what? you're going to need a spirit. For everybody who, 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 who's a football fan, okay? If you were to turn on a football game on Sunday during the season, and you saw one of your favorite players come out, and they just had on some shorts and a T-shirt, getting ready to engage in a football game, you would look at them absolutely crazy because they didn't have on what? They didn't have on their uniform. They didn't have on their helmet, their shoulder pads, all of these things that they need to protect themselves when the physical punishment comes the same in our spiritual life. You cannot go out into this world fighting spiritual battles, and you go out there naked. So he says... Number one, you are strong in the Lord. But in being strong in the Lord, you got to use, right, the, 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 the uniform or, or what it is, the armor it is that God has supplied you with in order to win the battle. He reminds us that when we have this armor on, here's the key. When you have the armor on is the only way you're going to be able to stand against the schemes of the Satan. No other way. You, 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 you can't stand if you do not do what? If you do not pull. He says, so the first thing for the tactics and the schemes and everything that the enemy will use to take you out spiritually and your spiritual life and your home and to come and try to conquer and take. He says, you got to be able to put this on because it's the only way that you'll even be, have a chance to stand in the fight. Because he reminds us, and this is what the Bible also always teaches us. Do you remember when Adam and Eve, when, when the serpent came to her? What's the first thing that he did when he spoke to me? The Bible tells us that he deceived her. He got in her head. He deceived her. He started, he started twisting things up, right? And so the number one thing that we know that we need to know is don't forget who the, who the enemy is and the tactics that he used. If the enemy, if the devil was a deceiver way back then in the Garden of Eden, guess what? He's still a deceiver today. And so the one thing that we know why I got to be able to protect myself against what? Against all the deception that the enemy tries to bring into my heart and mind. Because this is the thing. If I can deceive you, I could destroy you. <laughs> oh, that's what happened with Adam and Eve, right? Deceived her in order to, and after everything else, that, that was the easy part. And we know that pretty much anything in life. For all these schemes and stuff and people calling and, and bank accounts, if they can deceive you and get you to make the wrong mistake, mistake what? Well, you will go financially bankrupt because of through deception. Don't forget that the enemy is always trying to deceive you, but he's trying to deceive you in order that he can destroy you. Oh, no, y'all don't take this. I know a whole lot of things that my, that my father taught me, but spiritually, he, 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 one of the things that he needed to tell me is that the enemy was going to try some stuff, right, that I wasn't prepared for, right, and that I needed to be reminded. And so that's why we bring this message today. And so he tells us to put on the whole armor of God. But when he talks about the whole armor of God, right, it's a metaphor. And we all know what armor is, right? We've seen uh, knights who stand in their armor. But it's a metaphor, right? And we're going to use scripture to try to talk. It's, it's a spiritual training. It's spiritual tools. It's spiritual armor that we have to use in order to be able to stand. Right? Verse 12. This is the thing. Because the enemy deceives us. Anybody got drama with somebody? Got drama with a neighbor? Got drama with your spouse? <laughs> got drama with your kids? Got drama at the church, got drama with the boss. Watch this. The first way that he deceives us is he really makes us think that our war is against each other. If, if, if he can get me and Shari to start going at it at home all day and deceive us, she don't like me, she don't care, and I don't care, and we get into that, right? If I get into it with my kids and they get on and I open the door and kick them out, and all of these things deceive my children to think because I put rules in place that I do not love them, right? If, if he can make, even as a pastor, if he can make you and I think that the war is against me and you, what's that? He's, he's deceiving us to destroy us. Y'all with me? And so what Paul reminds us in verse 10, he says, I need you to know, and y'all write this down for those taking notes, 
that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. The devil ain't flesh and blood. Do y'all know that? The enemy is not flesh and blood. You and I, we are flesh, we are blood, we are skin, we are cells, we are all of this thing. The enemy is not, right? And so the devil is not walking around here with a pitchfork and a red suit on, okay? You are not going to see him. It is a spiritual battle, right? Does he use flesh and blood? Yes. Will he use people? But when I look and something begins to take place, I have to be able to identify. You remember the scripture where, 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 where Peter uh, speaks and Jesus says, get thee behind me who? Satan. Peter was talking, but the spirit that was in him was what? Was of Satan. And so Jesus knew where to direct it. Some of the things that the person sitting next to you is not your enemy. And so he reminds us that it's not against flesh and blood. But one thing that we have to remember, though, he does imply, but it is still warfare. Y'all know what warfare is? War. Where there's war, there's what? Carnage. Where there's war, there's what? Death. Where there's war, there's what? Hurting, pain, all right? And so he does remember in terms of the what? In terms of the spiritual that we have to remember that is spiritual warfare. And so he reminds us that the things that we're up against are authorities and, and powers and things what? Dark forces that are in this world that are evil. I need you to know this. We live in an evil world. And scripture tells us this, that Satan is the prince of this world, right? And so knowing this, then as good as some of us are, as good as certain people can be, well, uh, we, we don't pay enough attention to understand and teach our children this. This is our evil world that we live in. I'm going to tell y'all this. As good as some of y'all are, all, all of us in this room have had evil thoughts. Is Christian saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, listening to your church music, playing your tambourine at home? I don't care what. Each and every one of us struggle or have. Why? Because we live in an evil what? World. So he reminds us of this. And so we have these, the enemy. And he have the, these, 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 these imps and, these, and all this spiritual warfare and these things that are taking place. Why? To, to, to keep the will of God being done. What do you mean, Pastor Adam? To keep the will of God being done in your marriages. To keep the will of God being done in, in how we raise our children. To keep the will of God being done in our communities and our neighborhoods. To keep the will of God being done in what? In churches. To keep the will of God being done what? In our schools. That's, that's the purpose of all of this enemy and all of the enemy and all of these schemes. And is to keep the will of God from being done. Because if I am focused on everything else that is coming against me, then I am not looking for the will of God in what? In my life so I can live my life according to God's will so that he can bless me. And now I can be what? A blessing to what? My wife, my children, my community, and everybody. Is this making sense? to anybody on today now when I'm operating the will of God I become the employee and the person so now I have all of this impact why because I'm aware of what the enemy is doing and so follow me to verse 13 we moving he says with all of this that I've just told you it's an evil world that's what Paul is saying with everything that I've reminded you of, he says this is what you got to do he says so therefore that word is important he says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day done in all doing everything that you have to, can do to stand. That is the important part. He never said that we would not get hit. Did y'all see that? He never said that it wouldn't be a fire. He never said that our armor wouldn't get dented. But the goal, right, in terms of putting on the whole warfare is that you and I will be able to stand. To stand what? To stand firm in our faith, to stand firm in our belief, to stand firm in who we know that God is and who Jesus is. The whole, to stand firm in what we know, that I may take some hits, some bumps and bruises. The enemy may attack everything, but watch this. When I have on the armor of God, I know this, that I am able to stand. And as long as you're standing, you can do what? You can still fight. A boxer in the ring who gets knocked down, he ain't no good. Can't do nothing from his back. So he says, look, this is the first thing that you and I need to remember is that we will get hit. But the goal of the armor is to be able to do, I need y'all to grab, you have to be able to stand. Y'all want to be able to stand? I'm going to tell you how to be able to stand. Watch what he says. Some scriptures say to stand firm that we have to have the full armor of God because of the evil day that we are in. 
but that the armor is what gives you and I the ability to stand when the spiritual warfare comes. And though it can be a moment in which, watch this, warfare is always terrifying. Find any soldier, any, any Green Beret, any, any Navy, Navy SEAL, find anyone who has ever been in combat, and they will tell you while they were doing the job, watch this, there's still some inkling, there's still a little bit, amount of what? Of some type of fear and trepidation. That's just this instinct that God, and so for, at times it will, what we're up against will be frightening. What it means is what we're up against can be frightening to us, okay? But he reminds us in, 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 in verse 13, that our goal is to stand in verse 14. He says, stand therefore, and here's the first instruction. He says, girding your waist with truth. The first part that he tells us to put on, this spiritual armor, right, that we put on, he says, put on the belt of truth. What is the belt of truth? It is the same thing in which we would see, but for them it would be a picture or it would be something like a leather belt for a Roman soldier, okay? And in this belt, what hell, what he, when he had the belt on, the Roman sword, it would hold everything that he needed for battle. And so have you ever seen that? If you watch these movies with, with, with knights, right, they have a place where they can put what? Where they can put their sword and, and, and they can put other things, right? And, and, and it's somewhat like, I'm going to put it this way, it's somewhere like a spiritual tool belt, right? And it's something, right, that, that holds everything else in place. And so he reminds them that they need this belt of truth. What is the belt of truth then? The first thing that we have to understand and know is the truth of God's word. That God cannot lie. Do y'all hear me today? So everything we write, and so there is an integrity, there is a, a truth, there is an authority, right? So when you read the promises of God in the word of God, God's promises cannot fail. The war is going on around us, right? And we are in the midst, whatever it is that God has said, whatever it is that God has spoken, when you take the word of God, you hide it in your heart, or you begin to try to live by the word of God, the first thing that he's telling you is, you're going to have to remember and know that every word that has come out of the mouth of God is true, right? And with God, promises made are promises kept. But not only that, that God is true, but we have to be true to the word of God. Y'all got that? That we have to live this, myself included. I got to remind myself, if I'm going to preach it, then I got to live it. Here goes the time. I can preach it all day long. <laughs> I can tell anybody what to do. I can, it makes sense. Any trained monkey can do what I'm doing. For any of us can come and we can read it. But watch this. It is the living it with integrity. That is our first defense. What? Watch. I tell you again, when Adam and Eve were there, the first thing he came to do was to deceive her, which was to do what? Which was to lie to her and twist up what it is that God had already spoken or said to them. And the, and the minute that happened, she was doomed. The minute that that happened, Adam was doomed. So he said, the first thing that we have to understand, right, is the belt of truth. Not only the truth of what it is that God has, has said to us, but the truth and integrity in which we what? In which we walk this thing. But not only that, he says, not only take on the whole armor, uh, verse 14, but putting on, girding your waist with truth, but what? He says, put on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. You know what the breastplate is? It would be this metal armor. And, and, and the breastplate is there. Watch this, it's the, belt, the breastplate of righteousness, though. And, 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 and what's in here? All of your what? Your vital organs. Take the word vital, right? If these are our vital organs, that's what doctors tell us, right? You got your, your kidneys, your livers, and all, all those things we learned in, in, in school and biology and all them things that I can't remember. But you got all of these things, your heart, you got all of these things, but they are vital organs, meaning what? They are very important. That you need. And so watch this, it's saying, in terms of that, we, we protect, that's why we have the rib cage. The rib cage is there to protect some of your vital organs. Well, then that's the physical. But in the spiritual, what? We have to put on the breastplate of righteousness, right? 
And so that is to do what? To guard our hearts. The Bible teaches to guard your heart against what? Against sin. Because we live in what? We live in an evil world. And just because we are saved and we're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, there is sin all around us. And y'all can tell me what you want. Each and every one of us are tempted by sin. And sin is pleasurable and feels good. Y'all stay with me. You know what I mean? I, your parents and you train up kids. It's, it's some things that I just wish that my pops would have told me about sin and some of the things that I can get entangled with that I would have just been a little more aware so I wouldn't be running around because it would feel. If you would remind me how good it would feel that it would not trap me. Does that make sense? And so he says the breastplate of righteousness to keep us right and to guard us so that we can live righteous and to be able to guard our hearts right against sin. As we try to live more like Christ, I'm going to tell y'all something. So I've told you guys before that during the week that I come to the church and, and sometime I'm just here in the sanctuary and I'm praying, right? And I'm reading, I'm just doing my regular devotionals. Um, but then a couple of weeks ago, I was a little frustrated. So I came in here and if y'all, I told y'all before, I just walk, walk. If anybody was to put a camera here, you would think that I was absolutely crazy. Because I walk around the sanctuary, and I'm walking around in circles, and I'm just talking to God. But one particular day, about three weeks ago, I said, you know what, God? It's me and you today. I got some questions for you. I got some things that I got to talk to you about. And matter of fact, I'm not even leaving this church, right? God, we're getting ready to go toe-to-toe today. There's some things that I need to get off my chest as, as I look at my life and I look at circumstance. It's some things. Watch what I said. Y'all stay with me. God, you're going to have to explain some things to me. So I'm walking around this sanctuary, just talking at heaven, just talking to God about God, reminding God of who I am, reminding God of everything that I got. Look, the shirt I got. I'm reminding God I'm a good father, husband. God, I'm doing all this stuff. God, I'm doing everything that I can. Watch this. God said, oh, you want to talk, Adam? He said, what about your heart? I'm talking about God. You want to tell me about the father, the husband, the provider, uh, the, the pastor, all these things? He said, that's stuff people can see. Oh, stay with me. He said, but Adam, I know your heart. And I see where the weeds is growing. I see the stuff that no one. So, Adam, since you want to talk to me about what I ought to do, how about the way that you ought to be living in order so I could bless you? Oh, I stopped walking so fast, y'all. I got to the front of this church. I was on this altar on my face because he showed me the condition of my heart. How did this happen, though? Because sometimes, hear me. Being a father, being a husband, a provider, a pastor. You get so caught up in the physical things that there are times, and I don't feel bad about telling you, that some of the spiritual guarding, guarding that I need to do, right? And having my breastplate of righteousness. And so he said, Adam, you want to name all the things you do? Watch this. But how about all these little secret things that have, and, I, and I, now I'm getting in front of him saying, now God, why you want to bring that up? God, you want to bring up old stuff? I thought we talked about that. Because he threw my sin, he threw my lifestyle. Right. And I ain't saying that I'm living out here. Just y'all know that I ain't out here living crazy. But I'm saying there can be things in your heart that you're not aware of. Pride. Right. Negativity. Gossiping. Lying. Uh, there's some things that y'all stay with me. But we got to teach our children that you can't keep telling kids, be good, be good, be good. Do it the right way. Do it, mama. Told. You have to let them know that there is evil in this world. And the only thing that they can do is to do what is to guard their heart is to put on the, the, the breastplate of righteousness and try each and every day by the word of God to do what they can and follow the instruction. What of God and what he has given them. And when they're able to take that, they got a little bit more to protect. Right. Because the enemy is always coming to. Doing what? Trying to get to my vital organs. If the enemy can get to my heart, Amen. y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. Yes. But I, I'm you, I wasn't really aware. Y'all with me? I wasn't aware. But God, when I was on my face, watch this through the power of the Holy Spirit, God revealed some things to me. I said Adam, if you can clean that up, I can bless you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you can clean that up, it's some other things that are just going to naturally do what? Work themselves out, right? For any of us that work in our yard, right? Sometimes I go in the yard and I cut the grass and I do different. And, and, and Shari will tell me because I'm out there cutting and I just want to get done. She say, Adam, don't forget to pull the weeds because the weeds will choke out every, all the good what? All the good seed and all that I've done. Y'all with me? So he says, the breastplate of righteousness, that, 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 
Make sure you're not harboring, right, in our nature and, and how we live our life and in terms of our sin, right, and that we're attempting every day to, to do what? To live according to God's righteousness. Yes. God's righteousness and your righteousness and the world's righteousness is different. I want y'all to know that. What you mean, Pastor Adam? According to the world standard, you can be a good person. With everything that the world says that we should get up, go to work every day, be kind to people, um, feed, you know, all these things. Oh, I see somebody in front of 7-Eleven, give them a dollar. All these good things. But watch this. But what does God, how does God, how does he require for us to live? And so don't get it so twisted that you think that you're living a righteous life by the world's standards. So he says the only way is to do what? Through the belt of truth, the truth of God's word, and then put on the breastplate of righteousness. Y'all with me? But then watch this in verse 15. I ain't going to be before you long. He said, after the breastplate of righteousness, he says, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. But what he's saying is there is when you guard your feet that you got to be what? There's a readiness. You see that there in the text? Having shod your feet with what? Preparation. All right. You know why you wear shoes? Not because they match your outfit. Now, that's part of it, right? right? But it's preparation. There are some things that when you walk in this daily life, you never feel them because of what? What's on your feet. They don't affect you. So you, we wear them to protect what? Protect you. Y'all with me? Okay. So we are prepared for what it is that we may step on or getting caught up when we go out into the world. Y'all still with me, right? I'm going slow for a reason. And so with these particular soldiers back then, these boots, that shoes that they wear, they would have nails in the bottom of them. You with me? Because when they, remember the goal is to be able to do what? Stand. Y'all still with me? You got to be able to stand. And so to prepare to be able to stand in the battle, they would have these nails in the bottom of their shoes in order that when they were in the battle that they can keep their grip, right? So that they can keep their feet work. I need to be able to keep my feet firm in where it is that God has planted me. I got to keep my feet firm in being a man of God and keep my feet firm, not what? Not in sin, but righteousness and keep my feet firm in being a husband. And being, I got I to gotta be firm because the enemy is attacking me every day. But if I'm firm, then what? Then I can still stand. I got a better chance at doing what? At fighting, holding. That's why you see boxers, their feet are what? Positioned a certain way. To be able to do what? To balance the weight. One writer says this. Having your footing where you're sure in battle, when you put on these shoes, it means that we believe the promises of God, right? And everything in the gospel to be true. Watch this. And because I know the truth of the gospel, here we go. And everything that God says, there is a certain amount of peace that I am able to stand in in life despite the warfare. The enemy is after your what? Your peace. How many times have you said to you, I just need a peace of mind. Oh, if I could just find some peace. Yeah. And y'all, and that's why, that's what, you know, me and my wife do some of y'all. Oh, I'm just going to go to Palm Springs so I can get some what? Some peace. I'm going to go on vacation. I need the kids to go outside so I can get some what? Some peace. I'm going to take a vacation so I can get some peace. We're always searching for peace. Watch this. God said the peace that you need is found in my word. But when you find it, you can have your peace in what? In God, in who he is and what it is. Watch this. I'm in battle. I'm fighting. Why? But I'm what? I'm not overly hyped up. I am have peace even in the midst of everything in the arrows and everything that the enemy is throwing at me and everything that's coming against my finances in my life in my mind in my spiritual life and all the temptation that the enemy is sending out I'm doing the best that I can to be a good man and a good person and come to, I'm doing but I why but all these things they can get to your mind to you so bad that you can't find no peace he says when your feet is firm your feet can be firm in what in the peace of this life that God has given the Christian. What does the word of God teach us about peace? So many scriptures that what? Remind us of the peace that we're able to find in God. I'm going to tell you this and I'm moving on. Peace is not the absence of conflict. That's what we think sometimes. Oh, my life is peaceful when nothing's going on. 
Peace is not the absence of conflict. There is still a peace in God spiritually that we can find in the midst of conflict. Does that make sense? Let me move. Keep moving. So then as he's saying, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But watch this. He says, above all. Here's the one. Catch that word. Do not miss what it says. Above all, taking what? The shield of faith. Verse 16. Everybody knows what a shield is, right? For them, it would be the shield that they held in place to do what? To be able to guard and block against all of what? The blows and all against the arrows and what? When anyone in battle, you would see way back then, they would have a spear, okay? Because the spear is trying to get to your what? To your vital organs, right? He says, but if you have a shield, you're able to, to block. And watch this, what he calls it though? A shield of what? Faith. You have to keep your faith. You have to keep what you believe, that you, you still, what? Because the enemy, if he can deceive you about who God is and what it is that God promised you, then you know what so many people do. You know why, you know why churches are empty? Not because churches are born. Or, because people didn't have a what? A firm faith. And when your faith is not firm and life circumstances and trouble come, the first thing that you and I do, we blame God for everything. And God, the same thing I did. I came in this sanctuary walking around saying, God, I'm doing this and God, I'm doing that. And God, and why, why, why? God, me, 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 right? That's what I'm doing, God, God. And so I'm now I'm mad at God and God, we're going to stand toe to toe, right? Because the enemy, though I didn't, the enemy, if he can get me to do what? To abandon my faith. If you abandon my faith, then I'm destroyed. Why? Because it is my faith, my believing what? In God that he sent his son Jesus to do what? To save me. And the Bible tells us that we are saved by what? I'm saved by faith. And so my eternal life, meaning heaven and where I will spend eternity, is tied to my what? Tied to my faith. And so if I abandon my faith, then I don't have what? Enemies say, oh, I got a whole lot of people going to hell with me if I get them to throw their faith away. If they don't believe in, and so what? Can we lose our faith? No, but you can show enough, throw it away. You saw that in the Bible. Many people, what? They would abandon their faith. It's called being apostate. They believe it, but then the tribulations and the trials of life cause them. He says, so above all things, because you're going to be in warfare, you're going to have to have this shield to what? To keep your faith. You're going to have to block everything. In him. But the most important thing that you keep is your faith in God. But I need to shield myself against all the things that the enemy is sending. Now, what the enemy sends at me and what the enemy sends at you, right, it might, be, it might be a whole different way. My weaknesses are not your weaknesses. How he attacks me, he may not attack you. But you can believe this. He is going to try to do what? To attack you. So he is going to try to attack you with temptation, okay? Your temptation may be a Twinkie, Okay, mine may be lying. Your temptation may be what walks and comes in, in front of us. Temptation can be a whole lot of things, okay? But it's ten, the temptation to do what? To take us out of the will of God. That's all he's trying to tempt us to do. So each of us have temptation. It's just different. Stay with me. And so I have to block myself against all the lies and the things that the enemy tell me what? To tempt me to go to get outside of the will of God. Amen. Not only that but to tempt me to doubt who God is, to doubt what God promised you, to doubt what you heard the voice of God tell you in your prayers in your quiet time, to doubt what it is that God may have told you 20 years ago and it feel like it ain't coming fast enough, to doubt, right, what you have heard preached and what you have heard taught, to doubt, that's what he tries to get you to do, right, and so I got a block against what? Against doubting and believing that God is all powerful, that God is almighty, that God is sitting on high, that God can provide, that God can protect, that God can keep me, that, watch this, I'm going to tell you a tricky one where he makes you doubt that you even saved. You ever been there? Because we all got struggles. Sin come in. And he gets you to doubt, do God even love me? I'm so wretched and ragged. I, can't, I, got this, I keep trying to get over this hurdle. Y'all been there? But he wants us to doubt. Because if he can get us to doubt, he can get us to do what? I just talked about it. To run away or to quit. But if we go back to the top, right? The belt of truth. Right. I start to tell in those moments I shielded and then I remind myself of the truth of what it is that God told. You see how he says you have to have all the, all the armor because it all works. What it all works together. When the doubt comes in, I got to remind myself of the truth. 
When the other things come to attack me and sin, I got to remember that I got the breastplate of righteousness. Make sense? When the battle comes, I got to remember I got the shoes on. So I got I got all these pieces in place already, right? But I got my shield, but I'm still ready with everything else. I'm moving. Verse 17. I'm almost done. It says, take the helmet of what? Salvation. All good warriors, all good soldiers have a helmet on. It was this metal headgear to protect, okay? And it has to do with, the text has to do with our salvation in Jesus Christ. I told you that the breastplate of righteousness, right, protect your vital organs, your heart. Um, but while these, these are very important, and I think I've said this before, there's nothing like a headshot. If I can get where? In your mind and your head. But watch what he calls it, the helmet of salvation. But what one writer says is it does not revert to our salvation in Christ. He goes on to say, 1 Thessalonians speaks of the helmet of the hope of our salvation. Watch this. When we look at that, the helmet of salvation is understood is us resting in the hope of our future. He is our hope, right? That I'm, I'm saved for a purpose. And I told you guys this before. And don't ever, yes, being saved keep you out of hell. But if it keep you out of hell, then your destination is where? Heaven. But to live in this life, you have to believe and know that based on yourself, that there has to be somewhere better than this. And that at some point in time, right, that I'll leave this life, but I cannot lose what? The, the hope of my salvation in my hand. I have to remember that past this place, there is a place that's better for me. There is a place called heaven. There is a place, what, where I will see Jesus face to face. There is a place with no more crying, right? There is a place with no more hurt. There is a place with no more temptation. There is a place with no more. At some point, the hope of my salvation is this. I'm holding on to my salvation for my what? My eternal hope. I love y'all, but I'm hoping to see Jesus. And I'm not lying. Y'all can say, you know, I hear a lot of people, ain't nothing wrong with it. Boy, when I get to heaven, can't wait to see my mama. When I get to heaven, can't, I, that's cool. Nothing wrong with it. Well, my eternal hope is in Jesus. I can't wait to see the man that died for me. I can't wait to walk around heaven, right, and sing holy, holy, holy. I can't wait to just get in that place. Of so much peace and so where I can walk around, they see where I can walk around heaven all day. And they talk about mansions and gold floor, and they just give us this picture in our mind of what it's going to look like. But I know it's going to look better than this place that I've been living the last 40 years that's been full of hell and tribulation and strife. And I've been broke and negativity, and I'm constantly trying to break these family curses and stuff. I'm looking for some. My hope is in Jesus. And so I fight against the enemy that he will not let me give up the hope of my salvation. Paul said this. I can't think of the particular text. Paul says, I'm, I got tension. I'm paraphrasing. Paul says, I don't know if I want to stay down here or go to heaven. Why? Because he knew, he said, I'll leave this life at any minute just to be what? Just to be, to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. There's no better place to be. And so I try to keep my life together. I, I, I have the helmet of salvation and all that on, right, to protect what? That I always remember where my hope lies. Amen. I love you, Shari. But my hope does not lie in Shari. All right, all right. I love my children. They probably bought me a card or something, some socks today. My hope does not lie in them. I love you, Warren Chapel, as your pastor. My hope does not lie in you, my hope is in Christ, right? My salvation and all that he has done for me. We're closing. Lastly, after the helmet of salvation, watch this. He says, but after that, verse 17, still take all the sword of what? The spirit. I want to see if you paid attention to something. The belt was what? defense the chest plate was what defense the shoes were what so you could stand defense y'all with me the shield was what 
defense. The helmet was what? Defense. Watch what he says. Okay, Pastor, I'm doing all this defending. How am I supposed to fight? What is my weapon? Everybody needs a weapon in warfare. Watch what he says. The sword of the spirit, right? That's your weapon. Pay close attention that the spirit, the S in spirit is what? Capitalize. This is our weapon, but watch, that we can use to be offensive. But have you ever seen a fight? The thing about the spirit is you can use it, about the weapon, the sword, is you can use it to strike a blow, but you can still use it to what? To block a blow. But it is our offensive. Watch this. The sword of the spirit, right? He reminds us that the sword of the spirit is our weapon. And it is also is taken as God's word, and God's word is, watch this, the only weapon that I need. What do you mean, Pastor Adam? Meaning this. Do you remember when Jesus was being tempted? When Jesus was in, in the wilderness for 40 days. The devil came and he tempted him, right? The enemy came. And he started saying things to Jesus. And everything that Jesus said was what? He gave back the word of God. He gave back scripture. Or I told you, the belt of truth, where we remember the truth of God's word. But you remember the truth of God's word. You know what God's word says. Is this making sense to anybody? I'm remembering it. But sometimes you got to do more than be able to remember it. You got to what? Speak it. <laughs> you got to speak the word of God. I told you, sometimes I'm in the sanctuary and I am walking around and I am just quoting scripture. I am just saying, right, I am speaking back to my situation, right? I am reminding myself what, of what it is that God said he would do, but I am speaking it to the enemy because one thing about it, when I begin to speak the word of God to the enemy, he has no choice but to back up. What you saw is that when the enemy was attacking Jesus, what, in the wilderness, the more that Jesus used the word of God, eventually the enemy did what? The enemy had to go away. Pastor Adam, how do I survive? in this life with all of this stuff that's coming against me with all that talking that we doing and all that texting that we doing don't forget to hit back with the word of God and reminding the enemy and telling him that you know who you are in Christ Jesus you know what it is that God has said he will do you remember that you're the head and not the tail you remember that no weapon formed against you you remember in your struggles that God will provide watch this that you remember that Jesus came that he lived that he died and he got up with all power. Watch this. I'm using the word of God that you remember Psalm 90, remembering that God is the light. Right? You remember that God is your rock, that God is your protection, that God is your salvation, that in this dark world, that God is your light, that God has given you the Holy Spirit to give you all the power you can do what? To stand. We're talking everything but the word of God. I know I want some of us got the gift of gab. Some of us are, right? We can wax eloquent. You good with words. Newsflash, your words might scare, scare your spouse or your kids. Your words don't scare the devil. The only power and one thing that he is, is the word of what? The word of God. The word of God has to be used in spiritual warfare and in these what? In these, this warfare, in this life that we live to do what? To back the enemy up. If a person who was standing there on the ropes just taking blow after blow after blow without swinging back, you will not win the fight. You everybody, and right, in every boxing match, they always tell you, it's very important at the end, they always, and I'm closing, they'll tell you how many times that a person swung, but watch this, how many punches landed. Here's my question, because I know that the enemy is on our tails and the enemy is after us. How, much, how many blows have you landed with the word of God in the last week? We didn't use some words, some negativity, some doubt, some, right? Have you struck any blows with the word of God that caused what? Have you spoken the name of Jesus which, uh, that it causes, because the word of God tells it causes what? Demons to tremble. 
Have you used what God has given you, which is the authority of his word in our lives? Closing. Verse 18. He says, praying always. You guys see that? With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watch. He says, so we got to pray. But he not only says that we got to pray constantly and that we got to be praying all the time, but there's something else that you do. You got to be what? Watchful. You got to be looking around. So you're doing what? Remember we used to say watch and what? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray is what the scripture is telling us. And we're praying while we're doing battle. And we keep on praying. It don't look like it's getting no better. What am I saying? But you got to keep on doing what? You got to keep on praying. You'll say, I've been praying about this a long time, Pastor. The Bible says you got to keep on praying with all kinds of prayers, meaning this. Sometimes I'm not asking God for anything. I'm just thanking him for what he's already done, how he's already kept me, how he's already made a way. Sometimes I'm just grateful that I woke up this morning, right, and God gave me another day. God, yeah, I got some things that on my list but on today I just want to say thank you God I just want to say that you protected me while I was driving up and down the highway when I was going to the grocery store because God knows they shooting folks up at the grocery store at the school at the church and everywhere God I just want to thank you for keeping me God that while I was laying there in my bed suspended in this place of what of consciousness and unconsciousness when you were asleep that you didn't snatch my life in the middle God I just want to thank you and we petition God while we're in battle God I'm fighting but I need your presence right here with me because the Lord is the one what if we find our strength in him here's the thing God I don't want to fight this battle by myself God I don't want to try to figure out how to be a good person all by myself I don't want to pastor all by myself God, I don't want to be a husband without your strength and your guidance because I'll get that thing wrong. I don't want to what? Impart to my children without the wisdom of God that I give them the right instruction. Because you can love them and steer them the wrong way. What do you mean, Pastor Adam? Because more is caught than taught. A whole lot of stuff I got I just picked up off my father by watching. Make sense? So I need the wisdom of God that what I teach, that it sticks. Because I can teach some stuff that's no good. Does that make sense? So we pray. But watch this. We pray for this victory in Christ Jesus in this battle. But why are you praying? This is the, part, the thing about war and battle. Have you ever seen on one of those movies, right? You see all the warriors where they stand in this one line and all of them with their shield. I want you to pay close attention to where it is that they hold their shield. In a proper formation, their shield not only covers them, but it covers the person next to them. When you're in proper formation with God. And all of us, if I took all of us and lined us up as believers, right, across this stage. We ought to be positioned in such a way that I'm not just worried about myself, but I'm worried about your spiritual life as well. So while I'm praying for my spiritual success, I'm praying for what? For your spiritual success. And you're praying for my spiritual success. And I'm praying for you to be able to stand. And you're praying for me to be able to stand. And I'm worried about your children. And you worried about my children. And I'm worried about your relationships. And you worried. Does that make sense? When we walk in the spirit of God, the, spirit, the, the, the walk, the spiritual walk is a very selfless, a very sacrificial. But this is the thing. That war and victory of war is always determined by the amount of casualties. How many people lost, right? We got to make sure that we all make it is what I'm saying. My father taught me how to protect myself. But my mom had another rule too. And me and my brother was on the phone the other day and we was laughing about it. Didn't matter what my brother was up against or what he did. 
how much trouble he caused. It was my responsibility. If he was in war and battle, I was in war and battle. He had a fight in the neighborhood. What? You, you, you protect everybody around you. I'm closing with this because it's Father's Day. Father's got to be protecting and be concerned that your due diligence that I'm protecting my wife or the woman or God and my children that God has put under me. That's my place. I'm specific because it's Father's Day. That's my place as a man of God to protect everything and everybody around me and whom God has given me to protect. That's the mantle. To be the priest of our homes. It's, it's Father, that's so particularly the men, whoever may ever watch this. It's my job to guard my home and to guard my wife. If the enemy is already trying to damage her, I shouldn't be helping him out. The enemy trying to knock her down, I can't be stomping her out. Can't be stomping my kids. Does that make sense to anybody? My brother and sister in Christ. We got to be protected. That's our job. And that's just specifically because it's Father's Day. I said it to men. But I'm talking to all of us as believers. Look to your right. Look to your left. We're all in the same war. Let's make sure that through all that God has given us, through his armor and through his power and through his word, that we don't have any casualties. Because if we stand and do what it is that God has told us to do and instructed us. God has promised us in his word that we will be what? Victorious. The word of God for the people of God. To God be the glory. <laughs> Father, we thank you on today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the instruction that we have found in your word on today. But your word requires that we not only be hearers. So, Father, I know that many heard on today. But your word says to be doers. So I pray that for myself and all under the sound of my voice, that we not only heard it, but that we will do it in this war and all that we're up against. That we will use what you have given us to be successful in this spiritual battle. That we will hold on to our faith. That we will hold on to our salvation. That we will hold on to our hope. That we will love each other. That we will protect each other. That we will guard each other. That we will pray for each other. So Father, we say that we trust you. Arrows and spears and life and weapons and things that are coming against our homes and our families and so much against our minds we trust you on today God because while we battle you are our strength and where we are weak father you are strong so we are dependent on your strength father for our minds we're dependent on your strength for our hearts we're dependent on your strength for our health we're dependent on your strength for our finances we're dependent on your strength for our families we're dependent on your strength at our jobs we're dependent on your strength as we do ministry we're dependent on your strength as we raise our children we're dependent on you as our kids go to school we're dependent on you father and your word tells us you can do all things but fail Help us to stand against all that the enemy brings. We love you. We thank you. And we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all that agree. Shout amen. 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 God bless you. We are closing. And as we close, we are preparing to take up our offering on today. And as you have heard before, for those who are watching virtually or even those who may be here, you can give electronically. If that is the source in which you want to use, you can use Givelify or you can use Cash App. And you will simply look for Warren Chapel CME Church of San Pedro. And there you are able to give and make your donation, tithes and offering. And we want to say we thank God.
God for you and we thank God for your generosity and we thank God for your sacrifice on today because it helps us to be able to do what to continue to do what it is that God has called us to do which is to spread continue to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ but not only that it continues to help us to be a force and to go out into the community and take care of those who are hungry and those who are homeless and those who are in prison and kids who are in the hospital so many things that we uh, attempt to do throughout the year in terms of ministry and your gifts and your generosity and so we thank God for you we ask that God will continue to bless your homes your finances and remembering this that God can and God will provide amen Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the gift as well as the giver. And so we pray, Father, that you will bless 30, 60, 100 fold. And as we have sacrificed on today, Father, we believe your word that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive, Father. And this is that when you bless us, Father, cause us to have the same generosity that you have, that we will share and that will be blessing, a blessing to those around us, Father. Um, your word says that when we lend to the poor, we lend to you, Father. And so let us constantly keep those who are less fortunate in our hearts and our mind. We thank you and we give you all the glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. We are getting ready to go. And I pray that you will have a blessed day wherever the rest of your day takes you. Again, to all the fathers, to all those men, to grandfathers, those men who just stand in the place uh, and being fathers and father figures, uh, enjoy your day. Happy Father's Day. I want you to know that we are praying for you and we ask that you would pray for us. Amen. Be strong and courageous until we meet again. God bless you. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting god you are the everlasting god you are the everlasting we set our hope on you we set our hope on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting god you are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope. On your love, we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord.